NFTs, treasure in the world of gaming. Okay, good afternoon, guys. Thank you for uh, joining in on this slightly unscheduled and slightly unusual session. Uh, not that my speakers are unusual, but uh, this session is certainly going to be a slightly unusual one. Um, the topic of this... I'm going to call this more of a fireside chat than a panel. I feel like there's three of us, so we can, we can make it a little bit more engaging and a little bit more interesting. Um, NFTs, a potential market. NFTs, very hot topic at the moment. Um, what I'll do is uh, I'll introduce myself, then I'll let the uh, other co-fireside chatties, what do we call ourselves, co-participants, co uh, talk, and um, we'll hopefully get a little bit of engaging content and give you guys something to enjoy for the next uh, 20 or so minutes. Uh, I'm Cal Evans, I'm an international lawyer and the managing associate of Gresham International. Um, I also work a lot in the crypto space, I have a couple of startups. Uh, I wrote a book, The Little Book of Crypto, and consult with a number of governments all over the world. Um, yet to do anything in Serbia, but uh, I've done a reasonable amount with the EU. Um, so it's great to be here, great to be joined by my two esteemed uh, fireside chatties of panelists. Um, Jaber, kick, kick us off. Yeah, well, uh, my name is Javi. I was here like a little before. I'm the CEO of Lilab Lab Games. We're a startup that, well, we're doing a video game based on, based on blockchain. I've been like in crypto for not too much, just three, four years. I was an architect before, but I changed my mind, and this is more engaging for sure. And, and well, like, uh, right now, let's see if you, if you like. Yes. And Megan. Okay. Hi, my name is Megan Nilsson. I go at Crypto Megan. I've had a few talks today, so maybe some of you have seen what I've been doing, but um, I'm a high-end crypto and NFT portfolio consultant for celebrities, companies, large companies, investors, and also helping them bridge their companies from Web 2 to Web 3, a lot of which are um, looking to get involved with NFTs and gaming or how they themselves as artists can capitalize on this newfound freedom as creators. So uh, that's part of what I'm doing as well as educating um, and advocating for women. So, But okay. NFTs is a big part of my whole thing. So Very cool. So we've got the lawyer, the creator, and the expert. I love it. This is, this is going to be good. Okay. So... Um, Let's start talking a little bit about NFTs. We, we're, I feel like we're bored to death. Everybody knows what an NFT is. We don't need to go over NFTs again. But let's talk about some of the practical applications. Um, let's maybe both of you could share something where you've seen NFTs be deployed and it really kind of took your breath away. You were like, I didn't, I didn't think of an NFT in that use and now it kind of makes sense to you. So, uh, Megan, maybe you could kick us off. Uh, well, where I didn't expect, I think maybe I could just give a, a little bit of a background of my engagement with nfts and how i got involved um so basically it's it's pretty new for most people you know it's it's been like one year since we've really been heavy into the space and um most people and so i started out in nfts like board ape yacht club and so for me um i'm still a member of board ape yacht club and for me it's been interesting to watch the evolution of what nfts were and what they're becoming like when I first joined Board Ape Yacht Club, the reason why I did it was because I was in the Discord and it was before all of the celebrities, before anybody was talking about it, and the grown men were making ape sounds in the Discord. And I was like, what is this? Why is this so popular? Why do they like it? It was just nothing still, right? And um, <laughs> hi there. And um, so it, caught, it captured my interest and the only utility then was writing on a bathroom wall. That's literally writing on the bathroom wall. And so um, that is what it started as, and it's evolved into something incredible today. Uh, you would call it, I guess, a membership utility, where I've been able to do some of the best networking of my entire life. I mean, you walk places, you go places, and you see people with a shirt, or they're involved in your community, and they instantly connect with you and help you uh, grow in however they can. It's, it's been an amazing thing to see. So that's one thing I would say is membership, a membership utility. and. Um, also, real estate. I've seen um, people, especially in my home, in the place where I live, Marbella, Spain, starting to sell houses through real estate, and more importantly, tokenized gated events, token gated events through NFTs. I mean, that is in, in wonderful for any creator or anybody throwing any kind of event to be able to token gate it with NFTs to to get in. So. Those are some of the things that I've been seeing lately. So. Awesome. Yeah, I, I love Apers. I'm an avid, avid fan of Apers. Um, <laughs> I actually met a guy in the airport flying from Oslo to here that had a board at Yacht Club t-shirt on. We instantly started talking about it. Uh, it's, it's super cool. Um, and you're right, three years ago, two years ago, probably would never have even thought of that. Um, Javier, give us your example. Yeah, and we, we'll, uh, we'll, re we'll intro you and we'll, we'll come down to you. Yeah, I'll face it to another side, but the way we have to talk is like, I think like you're talking about rental. 
about tokenization or I was actually to talking about buying buying and selling houses okay um, yeah but no, no, also no, uh, right, but I mean like the companies called rental is they are working there maybe but many like, companies anyway, yeah. like, I'll talk about property like she was talking about one machine I think like super 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 cool like uh, you can connect between people and the things but NFT is like the level of certification that you're getting by NFTs that is everything decentralized and, and, and for sure is like auditable 24-7. Uh, it uh, gives you a chance right now that, that to connect NFTs with uh, a, a proper market that is the gaming market. I think like here also the gambling one would be like awesome, but the ability of NFTs to go into, into gaming and to give the opportunity to the player to have their own properties into games is way new because until now like everything was publisher and and and, and user it's like even like less than one percent of the people was monetizing their time but now like with these nfts you have your own property like you have your assets you have those cosmetics like everything and and also we can compare this with art like these 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 painters have been like struggling a lot because if you want to have a real uh, painting, you have to have the certificate that is five million and the piece that is five million. So right now we don't have this. It's like you, the, the piece itself, the NFT is showing you that the properties from this guy and the authorities from the, this other guy. And, and 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 like I think properties is awesome right now, digitalized. Yeah, I agree. Um, and just to touch on this, my uh, my surprise was certificates as NFTs. Um, does everybody remember those weird online courses you could do years ago and they'd be like, fill out this, take the exam, LinkedIn did a bunch, Google did a bunch, and it was like, oh, you do this, you get a certificate. Um, turns out you can just print those. You can just go on Photoshop, put your name in, and you're like, hey, there's a you know, certificate number. Uh, but now, you know, NFTs as certificates is, was probably my big uh, shock moment. Um, so the gentleman that has just joined us, Okay, introduce yourself. Who are you? What do you do? Yeah, okay, so my name is Alexander Ardouin, and I'm actually the founder of Meta Architect Studio. So this is one advisory firm, and we help companies to get into the metaverse. So we are doing, like, we're working with a bunch of architects that can, like, 3D model uh, basically everything, and also some developers that are going to write the smart contract. Fantastic. And your name is Al Alexander? Alexander, yeah, exactly. Thank you. That's my terrible English trying to listen to your French accent. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's on me. Um, okay, fantastic. Alexander, um, let's, let's kick off with you. Um, NFTs are, look, we, we see, we can talk a lot about the, the very cool use cases, what have been a surprise, but let's talk about some of the challenges. Um, crypto had a relatively easy, I'll call it a birth cycle. People got it, it was cool, you had utilities, you had securities, and it kind of went through this growth cycle. With NFTs, I feel like there's been a few more stumbling blocks, meaning I think some people have looked at NFT projects and gone, I don't really feel like that needs to be an NFT. Biggest example for me, art so many people will say oh an nft that's just a picture it's just a picture isn't it um so what do you think of some of the challenges today facing people launching their own nft or their own nft collection well um i think like actually like nft right now it's not only about art like art maybe it started that way but now it's all about the community because when you're taking a look at like some of the biggest collection like maybe moonbird for instance you cannot say that you're going to buy like a fifty thousand dollars for that pixel art of like um one moonbird it's actually all about the communities and all of the perks that you can have when you are in that communities so that's going like to give you advantage that's going to give you access to a private club and in that private club then you're going to be like surrounded with people that are like have like the same state of mind and then you're going to have like access to uh, that might be like a lot of utilities different might be like financials might be access uh, like for instance like with the board ape yacht club um, like the ape fest in new york or it can be like all of that and i think this is like the main thing with nfts right now um, but also there is one thing that yeah i like to say about nfts it's it's not only about like collection and about like a dropping like 10,000 pieces nfts is also something that are going to be used like in the real world like for instance i don't know if you heard about the startup ariani uh, this is like one startup that are going to give like one uh, nft to every uh, one that buy like a uh, luxury pieces like for instance with breaking or with Audemars piquet let's say you're going to buy one watch they're going to give you like the certificate uh, as an nft and then because if you're going to buy like on second hand one watch, for instance, like one uh, breaking, how can you know that this is a real one? How can you know that this is like uh, an authentic one? You cannot know it. But then with the NFT actually, like you have like 
all of like the background and everything that happened with that. So yeah, I think that like to respond to your question, uh, it's all about like communities and like the perk that you can have like in real life. And one of like the main uh, concern with NFT is like how can you bridge actually like the digital asset with the physical and like the physical world. That would be like yes. Got it. So maybe a little bit like Megan said, you know, initially people making monkey noises in a Discord channel trying to overcome that you know community sense of being like this is a legitimate project you can actually do something with this okay very cool um megan swinging back to the question some of the challenges um and please feel free to draw in on your your advocacy for women's rights as well some of the things that you've seen in nf in the nft space that's like a challenge for projects well i mean nft space and crypto have similar challenges in in the women's sphere in that like you know I referenced this earlier, but when I joined Board Ape Yacht Club, I was one of the only women, and yeah, they calling me bro and homie and dude, and you know, it, it's like because they couldn't imagine that a girl would be in there. But the cool thing is, is that they were very accepting, and 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 the community is really supportive. So we developed uh, a Board Ape Ladies chat um, where we have all the the women in Board Ape Yacht Club, and and everybody is. I've never seen this level of people rallying around each other. If you're in the club and you're part of this community, man, they just rally around you. And so what, one of the interesting things here about the NFTs is the IP rights, right? And I think that's, what, that's been a driving force of this bull run is how do I use my IP rights? We're trying to figure it out, right? Actually, Moonbirds just made them all public which pissed everybody off because they said, wait a second, we had the IP rights to this and now it's all public. So I think navigating that space has been interesting. But the cool thing about the IP rights is people are building out companies and the people in the community rally around those companies. Like uh, the, the restaurant that's just been open, Bored and Hungry in Long Beach. Um, you know, it had a line around the door and down the block when it opened up from NFT enthusiasts supporting them. My brother just launched um, uh, his own IP with a Bored Accountant. And he's appealing to all the accountants within the crypto space. So I think that the IP rights have been really novel, but also challenging. And like, how do we do this? How do we navigate this? So we're all learning along the way. Yeah, I guess there's also an element of um, trying to be taken seriously as well, right? Because we know, a lot of us know what the Board at Yacht Club is and what it represents and how really cool it is to be part of a community. But imagine if you're in Long Beach driving past that restaurant, of which there are a lot in Long Beach, by the way. Um, you, you're like, what on earth is this? Why, you know? What, what IP infringement is this? Um, so yeah, really good point. Um, oh yeah, expand. Sorry, I got one with this like. No, so tell us something that, that you've encountered that you think is an obstacle within the NFT ah, space. Sorry, sorry. Okay, okay. Well, um, for me, you, well, you were saying like this is coming up like super organic, but like Bitcoin was coming up super organic. Where like just two friends saying like sending transactions one to another one. Yeah. That's gonna give you some Bitcoin. Uh, give me some Bitcoin. Oh, it's fine. So NFT started like that. Like, think like it went popping up like with the art. But right now, it's like when NFTs are like finding a utility. And I think the biggest problem right now is that people don't understand it. It's like they are keeping seeing this as art, as well art or colored monkeys or something like that. It's like, nah, an NFT is a colored monkey. No, not at all. Not at all. This we're talking about technology. So it's like the biggest uh, fear, like the biggest barrier that we have right now. It's like uh, we have a generation of people that is like pushing this away because of social networks, because of uh, this bad meaning that it has around. And I think it's our, well, our problem and, and, and we have, well, what we have to do is like to educate these kind of people. It's like we have to tell them like, no, it's not like this. You have to follow these trends because it has much more than a picture of a monkey. It could have been like something else or something like that. And, 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 and it's not at all this one. So I think the main problem of the NFTs now is the NFT itself, as, as it, it has been sell, sold sorry, by, the, by, by the people. So we have to change the concept on people's mind. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, and in fact, one of the funniest things I think I see uh, when I'm on Instagram is I see TikTok videos uh, because I've been told that that's the only way guys over 30 see TikTok videos um, is when people will take a screenshot of a board ape or something and they'll go, haha, now I own your board ape. And I cringe because I'm like, well, you, you don't understand anything. You don't understand how that, no, that doesn't work like that. Um, and, and despite wanting to argue with what I assume are 16 year olds on TikTok, I'm, I'm not going to comment on it. But um, let's talk a little bit about use cases for NFTs and their trading ability. Um, there is a big debate at the moment whether NFTs are speculative or whether they are more use case. 
So in your opinions, what do you think uh, and where does that bridge lie? I mean, are they great for trading? Should we be trading them? Or should we be using them for more practical use cases like property or membership or something of that nature, or maybe a hybrid of the two? Megan, I'm going to kick off with you. Yeah, this one is actually one that I'm very interested in because I approached this from the investing standpoint, right? Like, I, I started out in crypto from an investment point of view and, and everything else that I found along the way, all the magical things of community, of networking, of, of learning to build something new happened after that. So I, I got into the space through investing and then discovered everything else along the way. NFTs is an investment. I mean, just like anything else, if you are able to spot a trend early and have a a vision of what the next trend could be or the future or where this is headed, you can definitely make incredible gains. I mean, I invested in the mutants when they were like three ETH, so around 15,000, and in a span of six months, there was a $160,000 profit per mutant. Six months, and that's because it was a new trend. Now, that's not sustainable, as we've seen, and, and the markets come crashing down, but so on the investment standpoint, yeah, there is a lot to, to be said there. You can make incredible investments and make a lot of money, but, um, there's so much more than that, you know? And so uh, back to your question of you said about investments and... Versus use case. Use case, yeah. So um, versus use case, I mean, but now, now as we're maturing as a market, we're discovering what the new use cases are. And one of the biggest use cases it will be, I believe, is cutting out the middleman economy. So artists will have the freedom to do whatever they want. I was just at a conference with Dead Mouse and... Um, uh, Scott Page from Pink Floyd and they were explaining like they were just starting to, to grow as music industry and and one Adidas wanted to use their music in a viral video to uh, you know make them viral and they were totally down to sell those rights for like a very small amount and the, the corporation their record label shut them down said no that's not okay and so they didn't get to do that and they didn't get that big break so now artists have freedom to to be able to capitalize on this cutting out of the middleman economy. All right. So I think it's safe to say your opinion is both are a plausible market. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Alexander. Yeah, I actually agree also with her. And uh, yeah, obviously NFT are speculative asset because like when you see like the fluctuation uh, with that, people are speculative on that because there is uh, definitely a lot of money if you invest in the right project. Although right now with the bear market, obviously it might not be like um, the most um, profitable days. But um, if you talk about like a use case, actually you can invest in one NFT as an investment. You can also invest in it uh, like a piece of art actually. Um, for that and then it can like the value can decrease or increase but you're not going to buy it uh, for the actual money but because you actually love the art there is also like different uh, use case like for instance an artifact recently they released like one NFT and with that NFT you can forge it and then you can have like the sweatshirt of that NFT they're going to do the same thing with Nike or so with shoes so there is really like a tonness uh, utilities and like uh, practices that you can have with NFT so it can be like to make money it can be also to have that bridge between like the real life and digital life to have like a digital asset that going to match uh, with like what you wear actually in real life um, it can be like a lot of stuff but obviously there's going to be still that speculation because it can be like highly profitable for many for instance when you bought like uh, one board ape at the very beginning for the airdrop it was what hundred dollars I think right now it will be more like with like the airdrop and the ape coin and stuff like that it will be worth millions so there is a lot of people that get into NFTs because they want to do that they just want for money but if actually what you're only looking for is money, you're doing it the wrong way because you need to have like a passion. You need like to spend more time to try really to understand like the communities, how it works, what would you get into it. And that's the only way to actually like be good at it and to invest in the right project. Because then, as I said, yeah, the, the utilities and like the possibilities are like infinite. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Javier. Yeah, <laughs> I will, I will face this in another way because you were talking about art and I think it's like, well, when you talk about NFTs, people say, yeah, art. It's like, uh, but NFTs are very speculative. Well, art is a speculative. There is one guy buying a big cock of crystal for 15 million. It's like there's someone buying uh, like, a, like invisible something. It's like, it's not about NFTs, it's about art. That is the thing that is speculative, but for sure you can relate NFTs with another case. Uh, we tried to start a, a new concept that is called NFST, like non-fungible security token but the Spanish uh, law said, no, you cannot do this because it's not inside the law. So like, well, 
there's no talk about legislation and of this because like this is another thing. But uh, we have tokenized like the the first esport team in the world, and we've tokenized also like one of the first films on uh, all over the world. Also like, and these NFTs are like uh, a participation that you have inside that is showing that really you are inside of this uh, esport team. So you are getting uh, royalties each time the team wins or the teams like uh, closing the year or something like that. So you can now uh, stop these barriers, like she was saying, like tokenizing uh, real estate, for example. Uh, you can make like an NFT of a building and divide it in 100 pieces. So you will have like 1% of a building and we will give you like some royalties each month if you're like renting it. And afterwards, uh, when it's sold, like it will give you some money. Like NFTs uh, are, are not art are like certificates of property and you can apply it to, to every single market and, and it's growing up a lot now. Yeah, so maybe I missed, uh, it's a really good point because maybe I missed something there. Maybe it's trading, maybe it's use case, but maybe it's also passive income. So maybe yeah. there's there's lots of things you can, you can do with NFTs. Um, we've got four minutes left and I wanna leave you guys with a minute for kind of closing sentiments. So uh, I'll ask this question because every talk has to kind of finish with this. Where do you think in your opinions NFTs are going? What do, we, what do we think we'll expect to see within the next 12 months? Um, have yeah, I'll, I'll start with you. Okay, I'll, I'll go on. Uh, yeah, as we saw now, you were talking about that like, it was like bananas right now. And, and, and then the market went down, went down. But went down because like the good people that know what NFTs are, are staying right now. You'll find this NFT gang uh, right now on the people that is interesting. So it's like, uh, what, what is coming up uh, next year? What I think is like gaming, is gonna be like one of the markets that is like absorbing everything about NFTs. It's like, it's a perfect match. It's even better than Tinder or something like that. It's like, come on, you have all your properties, you can, all the, your digital assets inside your game, but you can use it outsourcing it. It's like, if there's another game that wanna join you and, and has a partnership or something like that, and, and, and you have like your NFTs in, in this game and you can migrate there, it's like, awesome. So. What I see in NFTs right now is the utility, because the speculation went from 2018, I think more or less, uh, to now, so it's like one cycle, and right now, I think we will find the utility on NFTs. And all all right. Right. Understood. Megan? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, this technology is, it's so much bigger than a $300,000 cat gif or a $3 million tweet. This technology is changing the way we value things fundamentally as a society. Um, over time, so uh, it's a bigger movement than that. I think just like gravity, we are inevitably, it's an inevitable that we are headed to the metaverse and we're gonna spend a lot of our time in, in the digital realm. So, um, you know, owning land or owning NFTs or owning a part of this new ecosystem is gonna become a necessary privilege because right now we're living uh, like in a feudalist society where we're borrowing, you know, we're living on borrowed land from Facebook and Google and so, a huge element of this is going to be able to have that ownership and that digital ownership, once you understand it, is huge. And that's gonna be our whole future. So, you know, all things digital and tokenized in the metaverse, your land, your wearables, um, anything that you can possibly imagine, we're, it's all gonna be in the metaverse and it's all gonna be tokenized and in NFT form. So um, I think we're headed toward definitely gaming, owning the assets you spend your time and basically like getting those NFTs and reward for your time and consumption and investment investment in those societies. Very so. cool. So gaming, metaverse engagement, and yeah. Alexander? Yeah, um, I would say, yeah, for sure gaming, because like mm, right now, if you see like uh, what is making Fortnite, they're making it just at like selling actually rare birds, but that then when you, when you buy it, it's not an asset, it's like lost, it's like lost money. If you can make NFT out of that, that you can then uh, trade on our resale, that will be like a huge pro. <clears throat> Sorry, a huge profit. Um, also, there is like definitely the real estate that's going to be huge uh, for NFTs, because um, for instance, like uh, right now, working remotely, it's something that is more and more common. Well, if you get actually in the metaverse and you can build then like offices in the metaverse, everyone will have like to have NFTs to actually own uh, those offices. So that's something that's going to be huge. And also there is like one thing that we didn't talk about it, but I really believe that like the NFT uh, technology is going to be like tremendous and that 
coming to be used for everything. Like for instance, right now you have like a passport. That passport can be fraud, can be fake. But right now there is like one technology that is creating so that one NFT is going to be owned by only one person in the life. You cannot trade it, you cannot exchange it. Well, if the government can actually like do that, for instance, that means that there's not going to be like any more fake passport, any fake uh, driver license. So you can actually apply that to everything. It can be like a title of property from one house, but it can be like digital asset. And I really believe that like, NFT is going to be something that like everyone's going to use in a few years. It's going to be like something normal. So whether it is like for the gaming industry, for the real estate industry, for the fashion industry, or even for like real use case, that's going to be tremendous in the future. Yeah. Awesome. So it sounds like digitalization of ownerships and control. Yeah, all very good points. Um, we are out of time, and I'm sure we could talk about this all day, but we've probably got some better things to be doing. Um, thank you so much for joining us all. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope this has been informative. Thank you to our panelists, and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the day.